it's absolutely hilarious because you read The Guardian, you read PC Gamer, you read Kotaku, you read all these magazines, and they're talking about Gamergate 2.0 as a harassment campaign. And we saw this yesterday. They were like, oh my god, they're, they're talking on LinkedIn, and they're part of the harassment. And I'm thinking, like, um, can you get, like, some new talking points? Because those are the 2016 talking points. Who is getting harassed now? Can you name me the person? Because all you have is gamers being upset at a company. They don't even know the names of the people that work at the company. Uh, sure, you may say, well, uh, I, I guess the outrage is overblown because the company doesn't do what people are saying it does. Uh, and you can have a conversation about that, but like they're not harassing any individual, even if you were to consider that the most mild toast criticism is harassment. There is absolutely no person being targeted by gamers this time around. They can't even make the claim. However, we can make the claim that is the professionals, the game journal pros, that are actually harassing individuals and individuals that are uh, part of a marginalized, historically marginalized community nonetheless. I, I have to use their lingo because they love it so much, right? So for those of you who are new to the show, I, I doubt there's that many, but... You have this company, Sweet Baby, consultancy group company that is trying to make games more woke. And historically speaking, they have worked on projects that were so bad that they even managed to tank a studio. So uh, for Spoken, one of them, game was so bad, it tanked the entire studio. Uh, Gotham, Arkham Knights. You also have uh, other games such as Suicide Squad. Like many games that, that did really poorly. Now, 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 if you are a person, like a game developer that's associated with these projects and you have them on your resume and you would apply to someone else, they would look at it. And, and even if you have nothing to do with the failure, just, just by like having worked at all these companies that published all these bad games, you would actually be less likely to be hired. Right? Like if I, I gave this example previously. Imagine you're an engineer and you're working on these bridges that collapsed. You worked at five different bridges, they all collapsed. Even if you actually had nothing to do with it, like you are just in the vicinity, you would probably want not to mention that on your resume, right? Because it looks bad. So you have this gentleman, a Brazilian, uh, Cabrutus, Cabrutus I think his name is, right? And what he does is he posts on Steam uh, that these are the games that Sweet Baby worked on. And he goes on their websites, like, it's it's not, right, he, he doesn't encourage any harassment, it's just like, okay, these are the games. You need to know. And the thing is, like, um, especially in the Anglosphere, there are certain grifters, like, people that do not produce anything, but they extract a lot of wealth from successful individuals. And they do this on a constant basis, and it's not enough that they're just grifting, that they have really good PR as well. And they're very manipulative individuals. And the thing that they hate the most, like they absolutely despise this, is when you shine light at what they are doing. Because they prefer to do this in the shadows. They prefer to do this behind the scenes. They, they do not like it when people shine a light on them. Which is kind of funny because these individuals are also very arrogant. And they constantly shout from the rooftops what they are doing. Like, like the CEO of Sweet Baby is actually on record talking about how she's extorting companies and all of that. But, but she doesn't like it when people make those videos go viral. It's literally what Libs of TikTok is doing, if you're thinking about it, right? Like, like you have these arrogant lefties on TikTok that are posting, like, some of the most cringe and damning shit ever. And they just hate it when you take what they are doing and put a spotlight on it. But they're the ones that made it public to begin with. Like, they're, they're the ones that actually went out of their way to let people know, hey, this is what we do. So, so they don't like it when you take their words... And, and without even editorializing, without doing anything, you're just showing it to the public, and the public is absolutely horrified, right? So this is what they did with this uh, Steam account. They absolutely hated that they're shedding a light on what is being done. Like, he wasn't editorializing, he wasn't saying anything, he was like, yeah, these video games are uh, involved with Sweet Baby, I notice a pattern, I just recognize a pattern, I don't know what Sweet Baby does, but what I do know is that Whenever they latch themselves onto a game, that game is less likely to be good. So you have, like, this is how it all started, right? And none of the press mentions this. You have an employee from Sweet Baby coming out and trying to get this guy, not, not just 
have the, the Steam Curator removed. No, no, no. They want that his entire Steam library gets taken down. Which means, like, every single game that he purchased, all of his friends list, like, they, they want him terminated because he had the audacity to shed the light. And the purpose is to keep everyone else in line. It's like, if you guys speak against us, this is what's going to happen. And as you can see, this is now becoming an industry-wide trend. Like, you, you have all of these people coming up from their woodwork, absolutely terrified that their grift is coming to an end. Because again, you, you gotta understand why they are terrified. It's not about like gamers are going to boycott AAA companies or anything like that. That's not what they are afraid of. What they are afraid of is that AAA company is going to shut the door to these contractors. They're not going to um, give them money. Because now it's a time when all these AAA companies are cutting costs uh, and, and, and they're thinking about like, well, why do we need them? Right? And before it was, well, we need them because if we don't hire them, people on Twitter may cancel us. But now it's like, well, they can't even cancel a Steam account. Why would we possibly need them? And meanwhile, they're also afraid because of the localizer conversation. Like these people wanted to expand to Japan. They were like, oh, well, now Japanese studios are, are starting to become woke. Well, hopefully they will pay us, you know, hopefully they will pay Sweet Baby. So that we can consult them in how to make their games more fit for a modern audience. So, so they have ambitions. They were planning to expand. This is the worst time that this controversy can happen for them. So as you can see, it's like we reach out to Valve and Discord. So look who's harassing. You know, uh, none of the gamers are harassing a person. They're, they're just being upset at a company. Meanwhile, these people are legitimately harassing a person. They're harassing the Brazilian guy. And here you have like the Kotaku editorialist implying a threat to people in the industry. Hey, we need your help. If you help us now, well, remember, if you don't help us, oh, we're going to write an article in our publication that has probably 50 clicks. <laughs> the, the level of desperation shouldn't be possible. And, and, and you go into this timeline and, and you see all of these um, people, all of these uh, industry experts from C GDC and, and all these activists that have no clue how to code, by the way. Uh, that, that probably go into a gaming discord and are bewildered that people aren't using their real names and social security numbers. <laughs> they're all Pikachu face, right? Uh, but, but they're very experts in gaming culture and all because they learned it from the academia. They, they probably never played a video game in their entire life. Oh, but they're grandmasters in, in the knowledge and they got like a PhD from the fat university professor. <laughs> uh, and, and they're livid. And they're blocking everyone that disagrees. It's like, oh, no, we don't want any discussion, no dialogue. Oh, we're, we're the industry experts uh, with publications that probably get 10 clicks. I mean, look, look at this. Just, just, just so you know how sad it is. This, th this cry for help, this, this cry of desperation, 5,000 views. I just want to point out that in 2016, uh, if Steven Totillo, which was the editor in chief at Kotaku back then, when he was posting something, hundreds of thousands of views, just by posting it. Sometimes he would get millions of views. He was a journalist. <laughs> but back then they, they had power, right? Like, like Kotaku could actually write a hit piece on a gaming company. And uh, if you are an indie, oh my God, like if you are an indie, you, you, you could get canceled. Like, like you could have people harassing you. Uh, Reset Era would, would start campaigns against that person. If you were AAA, your stocks could take a hit. Yeah, no, like they were serious. I, th this is why people cared about Kotaku because like a lot of individuals back then were like, well, it's Kotaku. Uh, who cares? It's like uh, well, they can't sell video games. No, they can't, but they could destroy a studio. Now they can't. Now they can't take down a Steam curator. Now, now they have to resort to, to all of these desperate cries for help. Uh, going to Hassan Piker. Oh, Hassan, please give me airtime. Oh, I don't have <laughs> my publication. Only has 50 viewers. Hassan, please take mercy. It's kind of funny. I, I, I don't know if Hassan actually decided to take this Kotaku journalist. Because I'm willing to bet that even in lefty circles, it's like it's a Kotaku journalist, right? 
you know, say what you want about Vosh and her son. Like, you can say what you want, but at least they're not a Kotaku journalist. I mean, at least that. <laughs> Anyway, right, let me know what you guys think, and as usual, I will see you in the comment section, uh, where, by the way, I have some links, which takes you to a place where you can support my channel. I don't know why you want to go there, but if you're curious, there are links in the blue, pinned comment, and uh, for $5, you can support this channel. Take care.